Hi, welcome to Truth to Tal and Isaac. I'm Tal. I'm Isaac. Episode number 87 coming at you today. That's a big number. Best 87 of all time, uh, Sid the Kid Crosby. Yeah, we don't really care about hockey, respectfully, to hockey. Uh, but yeah, probably Crosby. Who's yeah. 87? Out of, Gronk was 87, right? Gronk was 87. And yep. you heard he's teasing a comeback? I saw that. I'm bored or don't something. Go to, don't go to Tampa, Tom, or, or Gronk, because you're probably just going to lose. Yeah, don't, he should come to Detroit. No. Remember when he was traded and said he was going to retire because he doesn't want to oh, play? Oh, We don't want right. you, Gronk. Okay. Yeah, okay. we don't want Gronk. Off the top, put your phone down. Uh, it's not my phone. It's my watch. Smart. You would think a 19-year-old would understand okay. the difference. One of my pros couldn't tell the difference either, but I'll leave it at that. Uh, big shout-out to Dale, uh, Team Town Nation, uh, executive producer and co-founder. Thanks for your input last episode. That was a good episode. Yeah, soccer, a lot of soccer. I think he said he told me that he said some things that actually happened. I don't know. It probably went over our heads, but good job, Dale. Good job, Dale. Good guess. Uh, the Patriots' loss on the weekend... Maybe the worst loss we've ever seen. Like, we were watching it. Like, we had all the screens going. And it was almost like, okay, was this a replay? Did we have to, like, what happened? Yeah, it was awesome. It was crazy. Yeah. Just like I'm assuming everybody has seen it. But if you haven't, just Google. <laughs> just Google the Patriots loss. On, like, an all-time, like, if, when you look at, like, the win probability or tie probability, at least. Uh, statistically speaking, basically, like, a one in a billion cosmic fluke. What happened? Unbelievable. Won't happen again in our lifetimes. It's like the Stanford band. Yes, that's a, that's a good take. Uh, yep. Really funny. But that was a great Sunday of football. And sports. It was, it was, like a, a, great, it was a really good, it was a really good yeah, sports good day. Good day of sports. The funny thing is, like Jeff Satterley blew the lead against the Vikings. Yeah, L. And that actually got kind of dwarfed by the Patriots loss. Two unbelievably bad losses. R- yeah, we don't want to talk about the Colts. Because I don't think any of our listeners care about the Colts. Nope, not really. Uh, but... Nick Foles is now starting for them. They're just an absolute... You heard that, right? It's just a mess. Yeah, I don't, I don't I get it. I won't get into it. Right? They've announced four different starters. I I don't understand. Just call up Andrew Luck, pay him everything, and roll him out there. I'd watch. I'd I, watch. I didn't read the long story from Andrew Luck a I couple did, weeks ago. I didn't ago. either, but I love Andrew Luck, so I will catch up We'll on read that. it when we're uh, off on holidays. Okay, off on holidays. Uh, NBA dudes putting up some monster numbers. Like, some of it, Jokic, he's a beast. He's putting up numbers. Jokic. Not since Jokic. He's putting up numbers not seen since Wilt the Stilt. Uh, but Booker and Tatum and guys just like 91 points Brooklyn scored at half. You texted me. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't think I texted you. I think I was next to you. I think I just told you it. Okay. Crazy. Uh, yeah. We won't talk about I want to do NBA next episode. Okay. I just a couple brief things. If you're an NBA fan, watch the Pelicans or watch the Cavaliers. That is just great basketball with really likable guys. Watch those two teams. And then uh, similarly... Good transition word there. Read, word. read what Demich said about Utah. We won't get into it. Just read it. Love that take. Read. Love it. We, we've been on that bandwagon for a long time. Thank you, Demich, for getting our back and supporting us. Because we were really supporting you. So it's a nice big circle. Yeah. So just Circle of friends. Read what Demich said about Utah and how it differs from Cleveland and like pretty heavy stuff. It's a good read. A good article. Uh, very interesting article. CBS Sportsline about Joe Dumars. Did you read that? No. Are we just talking about articles today? Or are we talking about other things that... We're talking about other things. Okay. Anyway, Joe Dumars, he's awesome. He's working for the NBA now, not the Pistons. So just talking about getting the crap out of it. The take fouls, the traveling, that they've called more traveling calls in the last couple months than they have in the previous decade combined. There's a lot of issues with the NBA and kind of the way people are officiated in terms of like, what is a carry? That is now a thing that wasn't really a debate the past couple of years, but now it's coming back. What is a travel... As far as long as I've been a basketball fan, that's been a controversial thing. Who knows? What I, is a trap? No concept. Uh, and Harden didn't help that, right? With his Texas two step step back. Uh, but regardless, NBA next episode we'll we'll delve into it. Yep. we're watching a lot of hoop. We should talk about it for sure. Okay. Uh, so Michigan, it's funny because you know a couple weeks ago they were like twenty two in the rankings. Is it basketball? Mich- no, Michigan football. Okay, well, they weren't 22 in the rankings a couple weeks ago. They, I think so. Michigan football? Sorry, no, Michigan football, uh, the uh, incoming class. Oh, okay. Sure, yes. Yeah, they were. But they picked up some late guys, and transfer portal, they are kicking butt. Number one, you told me. S- statistically speaking, Michigan has the best transfer portal, and I actually don't think it's quite close in terms of guys they got, they and now that might have changed. Bunch of guys. Great transfer portal. Albert loved it. I was talking to Albert. He's my Michigan insider, right? He was just raving, but we didn't want to talk about Michigan ball. We won't hear. Uh, but Michigan football, looking great. Looking Do you know great. why Michigan historically has not done great with the transfer portal? 
Well, Stretch Portal is pretty new, right? Yeah. In terms of what it is now. Uh, we don't pay guys as much as like a We don't pay guys. And, and Michigan is like a real school, real academic. So a lot of the credits don't transfer. Ohio State has so no... So when you take basket weaving at... 101. You know, West weaving. Virginia Teachers College. For some reason, that doesn't transfer to a class at Michigan. It transfers no problem to Ohio State. Yeah, the money thing and then the academic... Because Ohio State, like I think, like Ohio State buys aside, like the scoreboard that YouTubers, YouTube viewers can see in the top corner here. You guys yep. see... I, I made it myself. Right there. I, I don't think Ohio State has standards that are like, like I think it's extremely, extremely loose. Michigan has real standards. And yeah, like the Miami and A&M, we do not pay guys what those schools have been in trouble for paying, right? Like A&M, I think Nick Saban called them out, right? And yep. if Saban's calling you over paying dudes, you're probably paying guys a lot. Well, but. this is like SMU, Southern Methodist University, Texas, in the early 80s when they had Eric Dickerson and they were just paying people boatloads of money. Did you ever see that? 30 no, for 30? I didn't. You should actually look that up. Interesting. Okay. So this is the same thing just 40 years later. Correct. Texas, because they do bad things in Texas. Okay. World Cup thoughts. Go ahead. Okay. So it was a very interesting game. I watched almost the entire game. I can say this one over millions of fans like me that were kind of sitting on the fence. I can tell you I am going to watch more soccer for the next four years leading up to World Cup. I'm going to watch... More PSG because I want to see them play. It was fun. The skill level of these guys are sick. Interesting, yeah. So good. I don't know how much more soccer you'll watch. Not a lot, but it went from it's going to go from zero to a few minutes here, a few minutes there. Interesting. Okay. Uh, the game is great. The fact that, like, as a, as a guy who I sat down and watched the game, the fact that my dad, who does not care about soccer at all, was super into it, and mom, who won't watch anything with us, any sport she won't watch. We make her watch a little bit of basketball, a little bit of football, but Dude, it's mostly guilt. It's like average, like half a minute a week is probably her average. Uh, she was into the soccer game. It was like, exciting. Yeah. So really good job, FIFA. I just wrote good job, FIFA. I was extremely entertained as a casual soccer fan, and then... Two non-soccer fans were extremely into it. People at work were talking about it. Like, it's a huge deal. Big deal. And it was one of the better games in sports history in terms of storylines. Mbappe, next up. Messi, is he the GOAT? I think he won over a lot of people in the GOAT debate now. I agree. But I don't know a ton about that. I mean, there'd be some recency bias and Pele and things along those lines. Well, but your Pele's not doing well, right? You heard Pele's that. sick, yeah. Yeah. So. He's a hero. Like, not just Brazil, all over the world. Yes. Uh, Mbappe and Messi showed why the best, they are the best in the world. They really put on a good show. Yes, they put on. Man. A, they put on a good show. Ronaldo, you didn't see Ronaldo. I, I kind of wanted you to watch a Ronaldo, just like because he is still freakishly good. But it, man, what Messi does, it's pretty cool, man. I as a guy who doesn't understand soccer, it's like how did he just do that with that part of his foot, and then how did he get out of those that triple team and spin down? It, it's, it's amazing. It's very cool to do. watch. Uh, smart people and smarts websites say he might be the best ever. Sport, soccer game ever. A lot of smart folks are saying best soccer game ever. I don't I don't know. So we need to talk about the fact that it finished in pens. And I understand why after watching mm. those guys bust their guts for 90 minutes plus mysterious extra time plus 30 minutes plus a couple extra mysterious minutes. They were done. So it's just I was talking. Oh, actually, do you want to comment on our great YouTube comment? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. First of all, YouTube- Who's that guy? I don't know. I don't know. We got to get him on the show. Okay, we do. Well, hopefully he's listening. Basically, you, we're on YouTube. Feel free to like and comment respectfully. Like if We you, had such a great comment from a YouTuber. Two comments. So Basically, I, I don't know. A fan of the show left just excellent soccer analysis that blew us both away. And we really appreciate it. I responded. We really appreciate uh, commenting, especially when it's insightful stuff. That, sure, and it's a little bit outside our uh, comfort yeah, zone. Yeah, right? we, we knew very little, right? So YouTube comments were absolutely buzzing. Last episode, let's get it buzzing again. Great work, fans. Good. A tragically cruel way to finish a great match. But that's the way it's going to be. Yeah, and I actually, I understand why PKs are. Initially, I didn't understand the injury risk. Because someone said, like, you know, you can't just run these guys out there for 200 minutes. I get that. Uh, and, and then they basically said, it, you'll hit a point where they will just get injured. Like, you just can't keep running them around. Not even stamina. Because, like... In a boxing match or a UFC match, you know, in the fifth round or 15th round of a boxing match, the guys are just dying. Watch a Rocky movie for good bo- boxing. They just die, right? They're just barely throwing shots. Whereas in soccer, not only would their stamina be extremely low, the, the risk of injury skyrockets. Yep. So I get the PKs now. So my question is for a real hockey player to a real soccer player, what's the difference between sudden death 
playoff hockey where they keep playing until somebody scores versus soccer? Uh, I don't know. All I know is that golden goal, which is like sudden death kind of, right? Score you win. Mm -hmm. I think that I obviously it didn't come into play uh, in, in the finals. I think golden goal is awesome. I just like that's super cool, and that's a sick name to call something. There's nothing like that in the other sports. So golden goal. You saw the comparison between Emiliana Martinez with the big save versus the bronze big block. Did you oh, see I that? Did, yeah, I did see that. That was kind of interesting. Uh, I don't know enough about soccer to like. It's a big save because Messi's the goat, or LeBron's the goat. Save was awesome. Really, really, really good goalkeeping, and that guy's a bit of a character, I guess, in a good way. Um, so great job, Argentina, for a good game, and France. Good job to you guys too. Cool. Respectfully. Okay. Okay. Um, do you want to talk about the Lions? Yes. Oh my gosh. Like, they are getting so much national hype on, like, big shows, big websites. People like the Lions. And the funny thing is, do you know who the biggest celebrity on the Lions is? Dan Campbell. Dan Campbell. Yeah. Yeah, that was a good take. Uh, that might have been the Lions podcast, the... I don't remember what it's called. Okay. Where they said Dan Campbell's the guy. Like, if you're going to jump on that bandwagon it's the Campbell bandwagon it was fun so not a pretty win but still a W games they would traditionally lose normally lose defensive line was big lots of pressure they're doing a great job stopping the run now the Jets have a weak O-line but and, still, and they're injured and, and the they're Jets injured. line was injured right Vera Tucker who's the stud offensive lineman they got I think last year the year before was injured uh, I'll talk about the Jets game it was an all-time Lions game it was leading up to an SOL ending you kind of hinted at that. It was like, did. Yeah. wow, so Zach Wilson's just going to complete another garbage deep play where Okuda's just caught picking his nose on the sideline. and It was a bad bad run by the line secondary. And, and then now they're going to hit this. Because, you know, Greg Zerline was a guy. You know what his nickname is? Greg no. the Leg. They call him Greg the okay. Leg. In the With the Rams, they called him that more. He's That's older right. now. Okay. I'm like, he's going to drill this kick, and I'm going to be devastated. Because I was actually watching by myself at this point. Dad was out, like, being a fraud, not watching the game. No, I had, like, grown-up stuff to do. I have to do grown-up stuff sometimes. L grown-up stuff. Yeah. So grown-up stuff. I was extremely nervous. You know where I was? I forget, but okay. the fans probably don't care. No. I was standing. I was yelling. Like, it was extreme. The Brock Wright touchdown, that wide high play it's they so ran. Awesome. There's a lot of breakdowns on it. Orlovsky and other ESPN guys were breaking it down. Basically, Rock, Rock, Brock Wright was, like, the third option on that play. Really? Uh, yeah, and it was kind of a, a safe option, and he sold the block extremely well and, and paused, and then he released, and it was just awesome. One of the cooler Lions plays, right? Obviously, we just had the Panay. Deceptively fast. He's not that fast. Oh, yeah, and I understand what you're getting at. He wasn't, yeah, he's, he's sneaky athletic, Brock yep. Wright. He's sneaky <laughs> athletic. He works hard. Um, it was awesome. I was extremely, extremely nervous. Robert Sala, master class in not knowing how to manage the clock. You missed, did you, do you know? He just, he, he, he like went to the locker room with timeouts. Yeah, he, he kept the timeout. It was like around a minute and he could have called timeout or maybe it was around like 50 seconds and he let it drop like 15 seconds and he had called zero timeouts at this point. So I play a lot of Madden. I play a lot of Madden. I know how to use timeouts. That's, these these I, teams are billion-dollar teams, right? Like the, the days of $400, $600 million, they're billion-dollar teams. Don't you think these guys could hire a super nerd like the guy from Moneyball yeah. who's just in the coach's ear say, statistically, coach, you got to call a timeout right now. And they got to listen to him? Well, the Broncos were trying to do Broncos that. Broncos hired a guy because... What, Hackett, Mc, is, Hackett is just an all-time bad coach. Just somehow is super smart, but in those situations, just... Kind of becomes a stutter, can't do anything. Yeah, so the Jets game, it was awesome. All due, all due respect to the stutters out there. Uh, yeah, I wasn't even sure what you're saying there. Uh, Carolina Panthers. Can we talk about the Panthers here? I'm low-key nervous. This is the definition of a trap game. Trap game, trap game. But listen, the, the Panthers' offense is poopy. Yeah. They got some guys on D, that's for sure. Yeah. But their offense is poop. Their offense is terrible. Sam Darnold, I, I'm just, he don't scare me. Zach Wilson scares me more than Sam Darnold. Yeah. Uh, and Sam Darnold can move a bit. Sneaky athletic, but Zach Wilson is a is a much better scrambler in extending of the plays because he extended a lot of plays against the Lions. Yep. When I look at the Panthers' defense, Jeremy Chin, who's kind of their strong safety hybrid linebacker guy, he had 14 tackles last week. He's awesome. J.C. Horn, he's coming back from injury. He was one of the cornerbacks. Who's their D lineman? Burke. Well, they, they Burns. Derek, Derek Brown and Brian Burns on the Brian D line. Burns. Yep. Very good young defense, especially the the defensive line there. I am scared. And they're in the thick of the NFC South race because of how bad the Bucks are. And that division is so open. So it's not like they're playing for nothing. When you look at their record, you're like, oh, they're... No, they can win the division and actually might win the division. Uh, 
I, I am nervous for this game. So let's just get a win. Are we going to do predictions or we're not going to talk about that? No. Well, no, mate. Come on. Okay. Uh, we'll talk about the Lions' statistics here. I've got some advanced analytics. Okay. ESPN. So they should sponsor the show, obviously. They probably should. Or take us on or whatever. They only have the Lions had a 29% chance to make the playoffs. Wait, all, now? Yeah. All the other sites Come are... Come on. 52, are, I read. 52, early 40s is where most of them are right now. ESPN currently has lines at 29. 100% Did ESPN period. not update after the last two weeks? I know, but they're kind of fraudulent, unless they pick us up. Uh, the Lions have won six of the last seven games. Last time they did that was 16. Uh, th- this team is good. This team is really good, and Solid. they fight, yep. and, I, and I buy into Campbell. Uh, three teams have made the playoffs after being uh, under 500. Five, 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 five games, games under You five. saw that stat, right? 1970 Bengals, the 2014 Panthers, and the 2020 Washington, whatever they were called at that time. I the team's good. They can make the playoffs. Uh do you know how hard their schedule is? Like how hard the Lions schedule looking is? back, like if you look back at the teams they played, it's the hardest strength schedule in the NFL. I know. Tough. They have they have five games against teams who have double digit wins. So the average win percentage of their opponents is five ninety this year, mm-hmm. which is extremely it's the highest in the league. So yep. the fact that they're doing this, they're ahead the Giants have locked up the six seed. Okay. Do you, yeah, so they they locked up six. Seven is a is a three horse race between Seattle, Washington, and Detroit. Okay, so I have a question before we go into the uh, Lions the rest of the season. Is Campbell a candidate for Coach of the Year at this point? Because even though he's getting lots of hype, it's a, yeah, it's a stupid question. I, I haven't seen him like in the top couple rankings. Well, I don't know where you're looking. Uh, statistically speaking, he is second. Is he? Sirianni's one. He's like a minus 150, minus Who's 180. The Giants dude? Eagles. Come on now. Eagles, okay. Giants is Brian Dable. D- Dable. Oh, I knew that guy. Uh, what so, about Pete Carroll? No, actually, I, I don't even know if he's in the top few. Uh, Sirianni's one. That's going to be age discrimination against poor Pete. It's not. It's called ageism is what it is. Uh, Campbell is two, and he's like a plus 150, plus 170 in that range. So he is second. Uh, if they make the playoffs, if they win out, I think it's his. If the Eagles go, whatever. 17 and 1 or 16 and 1. I Eagles are probably going to tank a couple of games just because I don't know. Maybe. That's the way it happens. I, yeah, it's early to speculate what Philly is doing. Uh but yes, Campbell coach the year. What else do you have? Okay. Um so whatever happens this week, they have two more games left in the regular season. Hosting the Panthers, sorry, hosting the Bears who are 3-11 and have Justin Fields running around, Chase Claypool trying to block. What else do they have? Uh, they have Mooney. Okay. Yeah. They've got some good rookie linebacker. The running game, Montgomery, is just so overrated. Uh, that's Cole Komet. They've got some guys. Okay. No, I, the Bears don't scare me. You're just like, listen, guys. Yeah, I'm just, I, yeah, I'm going through their Madden roster. The Bears don't scare me. Okay. So Packers on, um, the last game of the season. I, I, I don't know. That's probably their most difficult opponent if you had to rank the three of them. You obviously told me about the Aaron Rodgers quote. It's almost like Aaron Rodgers sits in a room with some strategists and say, okay, what can I do this week to make me more hated by everyone? Like in a, a reporter asked, hey, the three teams that you're facing the rest of the regular season all have uh, marks over 500, records over 500. And he kind of did this like stupid smile. Well, one of them's only 500. And went on some little expose about stupidness and aristocrat vaxism stuff natural immunity aaron look yeah. yeah i didn't know we we're getting into, i have no notes on rogers i will i will just continue to say he is probably the, the my least favorite athlete disrespectfully to him i just like in terms of all time now i've hated him forever before the lions were any good and yeah. now, and he's you know now that the lions he are he makes good. james harden and kyrie irving look almost a little likable yeah, that, well, okay, that might be a bit of a stretch. Well, Harden, but. Harden, you can. I don't. I'm not a Harden guy, uh, but he is much more likable than Kyrie and Aaron. Yeah, he's not that controversial. That's the thing with Harden. Harden doesn't say Harden. It's just not fun to watch him and Trey. He's, he's not fun. He's not fun to watch, and he just says like, "I'm the best team of all time" because I cut my contract down a little, right? You remember when he was doing that stuff when he was just like just planting quotes like, "I'm the best teammate ever." Yep. Uh, I hate Aaron Rodgers. I really, really want to beat him. I actually looked at ticket prices to go to Lambeau Week 18. <laughs> it's really cheap. Like, 
50 bucks plus fees just to get in, and that's probably going to go down a bit. I, what does it take to drive there? Probably six and a half hours or so. I don't know, but I was talking to Ethan. Shout out to Ethan. We're going to hit up the uh, Football Hall of Fame sometime in a bit. Okay, in Ohio. Yeah, and then it goes right through Cleveland, so we can either catch a Cavs game or Browns game, depending on when we do it. So yeah, do you remember cool. the last time you were... Can't know how. Well, yeah, we went. But yeah, we went with the Oaks. Yeah, that, that was, played in the field. That was that was cool. Yeah, that was good job. Good uh, job, Oaks. <laughs> yeah, that was a while ago. So yeah, I hate Aaron Rodgers. Okay, what else do you have about Lions? Here? I'm just gonna say yeah. the D is gonna blow up if the Lions make the playoffs. And oh my gosh, if and when they win a playoff game, you will see how much of a football area this is. It'll be awesome. I've also I was I forget who I was talking to somebody about it, and it was like the amount of fake Lions fans that are just gonna. Do you know, oh, remember an end game at the end when Steve's there by himself and then everyone comes through the portals? It's going to be like that. Yep. Where Lions fans are just going to walk through portals and be like, on your left, Steve, even though they're not Lions yep. fans. It's going to be me and Isaac and Dale and then all these people just coming No, no, you've got some real Lions fans. But yep. I, we can't go through all of the Lions. You know, there's like a solid number, but it's just going to become so fraudulent where it's like, really, you, you were rooting for the Lions, you know, when... Stafford was injured, or and we had Tim yep. Boyle and David Blau out there. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. Um, what else about the Lions here? That's it. That's all I got. Okay, I have nothing about the Lions. I have nothing more. Let's just keep winning. I really, I really want a playoff game. If it's in Minnesota, I'm going to go to Minnesota. I really want to go to Minnesota and watch this game. <laughs> I just don't know if I can deal with that stupid horn that they play after every oh, two boy. yard gain, where they just uh, and then all the stupid fans do all the like the skull chant, the Viking yeah. stuff. Uh, but that aside. Let's, let's, go, let's get another win, Lions. Let's keep winning. Okay, so we are recording on Thursday evening, about 22 hours from Don't now. Don't the table. We are going on a road trip. Uh, we're driving south. Now, um, I'm assuming that it's going to be fine. Uh, Isaac's a cracked driver. Alex is a cracked driver. I'm a cracked oh. driver. Like, we all can drive, like, hardcore, odd times, just power through. So, one of the things that is really important for traveling. And this is, sorry, this is 20 hours straight. We stop to pee and get gas. That's it. No extra time, no coffee, no pancakes, nothing. So when I went to Indianapolis, we talked about that. That was like a five-hour drive. Yeah. And although we did it from 1 a.m. to 6 a.m., it's a quarter of the length of what we're about to hit up. Yeah, so this is going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of 4.30 p.m. to right around when the lines kick off. Wait, really? Yeah. So Because they're a 1 o'clock game on Saturday. Okay, okay, wait, 1 o'clock on Saturday, and if we leave 4.30 on Friday, we will be driving during the game. We should be arriving right around the time that the Lions kick off. 20 hours, right? 4 o'clock to 4 o'clock is 24. What time the Lions Back start? Back at 3. 1 p.m. Don't the Lions always start at 1 p.m.? So they start at 1 p.m., and we leave Friday at 4.30 p.m. Is that 20 hours? Yeah. Okay, excellent. I was just working it out there. Okay. Um, I, I, How'd you do in your accounting exam? Actually, really good. Thanks, bro. <laughs> I did good in accounting. Good job. Um, okay. And so finance. He, good. So here's one of the things. When you're doing that type of road trip, travel snacks are super duper important. They're always important, travel snacks. Actually, snacks generally are pretty important. But travel snacks, no, snop, no stopping, super duper important. So what we have decided to do is do a, a road trip, travel snack, draft. Snake draft. Yeah, stop hitting the table. Um, okay, Sorry, wait, I'm a little so excited. can we go back to the line? Okay, so if kickoff is. <laughs> are, are you serious? Did you fall today in basketball? I had a couple good bucks, though. So. Uh, okay, wait, so. You were on fire on Monday night. Respect, thank you. Andrew Ogley and Isaac Chudner lighten it up on Monday nights. Okay, respect. Okay, and I wait. can now hit a couple chases. Okay, so if we arrive at the kickoff of the Lions game, what is the game plan? Do we just go in like. Because cause we're going to have to unpack for three hours and do, like, go to condos and say hi to people in Florida. Whereas I'm just going to want to watch the game. Oof, boy, this is tough. Like, that's, now that I'm putting the mat, now that I've worked so it out. So you're saying we stop half an hour away and watch it at a bar? Well, <laughs> no, we're going to we're gonna, we're gonna watch it. No, but if we pull in when, when kickoff is, we're going to have to do things that aren't watching the Lions game. Which is, on 1 p.m. Saturday, I want to watch the game. Oof. So, just putting that out We're going to have to negotiate this, and we'll, 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 we'll cash in some markers. Okay? I don't know what that means, but now I'm nervous. Okay. We're okay. good. Okay. Okay. Uh, Otter even for a first overall pick? Yeah, what does Otter even mean? Hmm? Oh, hmm. rock. that's called rock, paper, scissors for you, Okay, two. sure. Okay, on shoot. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Yes, so the old man wins. Excellent. I didn't even want first overall. Didn't want first overall. Okay. Uh... 
I have a first overall, but I'm actually, I'm going to, Isaac doesn't need this item, so I think I'm going to let it drop a little bit. I think it's, it, it's pretty controversial. Dude. So okay, I'm going to let it go down. Okay. okay. And, and I don't think Isaac's going to pick it. Are you writing this stuff down? Sure. Okay. So my first overall draft pick, Travel Snacks, classic, transferable to any weather, just about any car, going with Pringles. Oh, wow. That's a good pick. That's a good pick. And it's so solid. Everybody likes Pringles. Even if you have a gluten allergy, I think you can eat Pringles. So does that take off? Are chips still on the board? I, I don't think so. I, think I had Pringles chips, take the chips. I had chips, bracket, combos, and Pringles. Combos are the Combos little... is separate. Oh, wow. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah. Well, there's stuff inside them. Okay. They can cheese your hunger away. Okay. So Pringles, first of all, yep. uh, go to Pringles flavor because they've got a lot of goofy ones. Do well, I think it covers all. I mean, I honestly, I'd go, I'd, to, I'd, I'd, I'd go with the, uh, the original. Correct. That's, yeah, that's the ones that, that we like. That's what Ethan and I lived off of in Indianapolis. Good. Okay. First overall. What about hot chocolate? Almost. <laughs> we didn't. Go back. That's a good episode. You should go listen to that. Okay. Um, that was two episodes ago? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to go with sandwiches, bracket, Nutella variety. So, okay. So does that cover bagels? Yeah. Okay. I think. That's a good one. So that's my first overall because it's so versatile. It doesn't make a mess. Uh, extremely important. Easy to make. Except if you have a peanut allergy, then you shouldn't eat them. Yeah. Holds well. Yeah. And I guess we just need to talk about relevant to when you're traveling, what meal periods, what time of day, how hungry you are. Like if we leave at 4.30 tomorrow, I'm going to try and eat something at 4. Okay. Yeah. Right? So we'll have to figure that out. But... Again, our traditional 20-hour drivers, you get up at 3.30 in the morning, you're in the car at 4, then you're driving. You're already in Cincinnati by the time it's 8 o'clock. This is a non-traditional way to do it. So you're going to be in Cincinnati a little after 8, but it's going to be like 8 p.m. Should be light. Normally, the cream cheese jam is a really good morning bagel sandwich. Okay. Then you transition to the peanut butter and Nutella. Okay. What do you pick? You cover both of those. Thanks. Okay. So my next pick, oh, this is super hard. Uh, there's so many good items here, but... I think now I have to go with the obligatory iced espresso. You That was my first overall pick. I took a big risk. This is very, very important for me. It's very important for Alex. Actually, it's very important for most humans because even little children in Mexico like coffee. That's a kicking and screaming reference. Kicking and screaming So don't reference. cancel him. Keep going. Okay. Iced espresso. Boom. Okay. I wrote that down. Yeah, yeah. Like that's... You didn't write it down? You were going to steal from me no, first no, no. overall? No, I wrote it for you. Okay. Good. I would not have picked ice espresso. No. Nope. I don't drink you don't, caffeine. You don't, you don't need a quarterback. You lot, got one already. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people are shocked that... Not shocked. A lot of people are like, dude, you don't drink coffee? I, I don't need it. I'm good. I don't... Not yet. Even um, small children in Mexico drink coffee. Okay. Fourth overall, I'm going to go with grapes here. I want to work in some fruit. They're excellent. Very good. Prefer the red variety. Green are also, uh, are also fine. We'll probably have some with us. I don't know if they're yep. gone. We might so have I, ate them all. So I guess the question is, does this take care of all obligatory fruit? No. No. Fruit is still on the board. I didn't say fruit. That's like when you picked breakfast in a draft that we did a while ago. Or it's just you can't just pick a meal. Yeah, I'm but we grapes. called and got clarification and I was approved for like it covers a, a number of breakfast things. I'm picking grapes. Grapes are grapes are cracked. And since we have some time, we're, we're okay for time this episode. We should tell our grape story from, I don't know, 10 years ago. You know, it's an all-timer. You'll remember which, right away. Which one? Not me and Bubba throwing the grape, grape all across and ra- the hall. Grape and raisins. <laughs> oh, yes. Can you tell the, the science people. Experiment. No, you go. No, you, you, you go. Okay. <laughs> Whose bag was it? Was it your lunch bag? It was in a towel that we wrapped that was probably mine. Oh, I think we wrapped. So when we travel, uh, often Daniela doesn't go in the car. And Alex is actually pretty flexible. So she just kind of whatever we pack is just kind of there. So we have various snacks, and, and again, we're going at different times, and so we got to do what we got to do. You always have a little towel, just in case, for whatever reason is necessary. Then we had some grapes. Well, there's making a bit of a mess, and I think there was some traffic, so then I just put the grapes, wrapped them in the towel, and then shoved them. You know, when you're traveling, you can reach behind in the either the driver or the passenger seat. There's like a secret pocket that's good for like a scraper, and also science experiments. In this case, the science experiment was the wrapped grapes in a little white towel, I'm sure we purchased the towel. It was not taken from a hotel. It was purchased. And then I think it took about 90 days. Somewhere over. We, I over? Bet the, I bet the over. Okay. It was months. So, yeah, 90, that's three months. So Four. It would have been four. I, I, I'm going to say probably around four months. We uncovered Tutankhamen, which was also the grapes that was in the towel. Boom! Raisins. So they were not grapes for like... 
when did we wrap raisins in a towel? <laughs> and we're like, we, could, we couldn't think. We're like, dude, like Florida, four months ago, grapes in a towel. We were watching a little Raiders of the Lost Ark before we started recording because we had some time during dinner. Uh, they, they, it's all about like the Ark of the Covenant and discovering the staff of Raw. This is all along the same lines. Very similar. So I think, yeah, since we have time, that was a great story. <laughs> Good grape story. So grapes, uh, not raisins. But it, it, depending on how long well, you hold on to again, it. depends on how long you yes. want to listen to this episode for. Like if you do, do this episode, you listen to it, and then you decide to take the grapes, wrap them in a towel, and hide them somewhere in your house, please let us know. Take a picture on Instagram or before and after. And we are happy to include the science experiment on the show. Happy to include it. Yeah, yeah that would be sure. a top seller. Yeah. What else do you have? You're, you're fifth overall here. Fifth overall, I think we got to go with some trail mix that covers a lot of different areas. Key component. Yeah, there's lots of healthy stuff in there and protein. Yada, 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 but there's got to be chocolate mixed in there. Trail mix, also referred to as towel mix, if it includes chocolate. If it's just all healthy stuff, then it's trail mix. If there's chocolate, it's towel mix. Yeah, I expected you to go trail mix there. The M&Ms are just a staple in trail mix. Absolutely. Staple. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'll go six overall here. Man, I've got some, some options. There's, there's a lot of good ones here. I'm going to go with an extremely, extremely versatile one. I'm just going to go with granola bars slash protein bars. Yeah. That's good. That was on my list. Very I've high. Got, I've got about 15 of them in the backseat of my car. Not for road trips. Just it's like, man, need a granola bar. Six overall. Zombie apocalypse. Bar. Like You're going to be able to survive for a long time. And I think I have some old Halloween candy and some like gum and we're, yeah. Oh, if I'm in my car, I can live there for okay. years. Awesome. Another very good travel snack. Takes a little time to eat. Pretty transportable. It can pretty much survive through a nuclear holocaust. Licorice. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, a little underrated. No, licorice is good. It takes some time to eat. It's very flavorful. You gotta chew for a while. It's Look, good. You're just saying bad things like hard to eat and takes a while and. I, no, like meaning it takes a little while to eat. You I think licorice is a bit. locker room cancer. I don't. That might stir up some issues with your boys in the locker room. That's fine. Really, I don't yeah. think so. Eight here. I, I am. I got two here. I'm surprised this fell. I'm actually. I'm just gonna go with with cookies here. Cook homemade cookies, store cookies. Yeah. When Ethan and I went to Indy, respect to his sister, she made these really really cook. Yes. Yeah, like, That's awesome. So like we hammered through these really good cookies. Is there any chance you could upload this episode tonight? Bro. And we'll get some cookies for because we don't have any cookies right now for the trip. Okay, so what does this have to do with uploading the episode? Well, I'm relatively certain that if we put this out there to our fans, we're gonna have some cookies dropped on our front porch before we leave tomorrow. Potentially, but no, I don't want to put it up tonight because the timing will be goofy. For no, okay. respectfully, no. We'll get cookies though. Don't worry. We'll get some cookies. I'll, I'll talk to Ethan. <laughs> uh, you're up. Okay. Uh, now we got to resort to a little bit more fruit. I just got to balance things out a little bit. Um, I'm going with clementines. Oh, it's a good pick. Yeah, clementines, uh, they're good because they don't take a lot of room. They don't make too much of a mess when you're uh, peeling them. It's okay to actually throw the clementine stuff out the window, especially in Georgia. Or Ohio. Or Ohio, actually, because that's um, actually probably the cleanest thing in Georgia or Ohio. The only issue with clementines, you know how like those bombs and stuff in movies, you have to put two dudes to turn the key? Right? If you want to set off a bomb or yeah, something, yeah, true. you have to get two guys to turn the key. Yeah. The issue with Clementines is you have to have a second person to unravel them. So it's Yeah, I mean, but the key to a successful, uh, tough trip is good co piloting Like, when I was, Isaac was eight, he was a really good co-pilot. I'm not now? Yeah, you're a good co-pilot now, but you've been a good co-pilot oh, okay. for 11 years. Okay, respect. Uh, crackers slash goldfish. I think they go in the same realm. Goldfish and crackers. Please get off your smart watch. Goldfish and crackers. Are they... Separate or what? Uh, it's probably together. It's a good pick. Okay, so right. I'm going with crackers slash yeah. goldfish. Yeah, pretty versatile. Crackers, I mean like the food, and then goldfish, like the orange goldfish. <laughs> got, got it. Okay. Um, what did you just pick at nine? Clem, Clems. Okay. How many do we have left? If we make a five-man roster, or no, six-man roster, six roster, we each have one more. Okay. Oh, I only have one more? We, okay, we'll stretch it. We'll do seven. Okay, good. Because i got to throw those combos in there. Like, I'm so surprised they're still on the board. They really cheese your hunger away. Okay. I think Goldfish is the better pick than Combos, though. Um, they're higher on my draft board. I would actually... Like, if there's a bowl of Combos and a bowl of Crackers, I'm going through the Combos first. Well, it's either... It's kind of like, you know, Sewell or Parsons. You're either getting a franchise tackler or you're getting Probably. a defensive player. We need to do some type of social experiment in Florida where we're just going to go someplace where there's a social activity. And we're going to have some Combos out. We're going to have some Crackers out. Good Crackers. Oh, social experiment. And then, and then we're going to see what gets eaten I can, first. I like climbing a tree and, and our man, like Our man it. Rocco Gerace. Yeah. We, we can just put him up to this. That's a good idea. Okay, sure. 
I'm going to go with beef jerky here. This is great value for beef jerky. Oh, beef jerky. Dante, if you listen to this episode a long time ago when you were a carnivore, actually probably an omnivore because you eat a lot of crap, we would hammer through some beef jerky. Yeah, beef jerky is a good pick. Thanks. So, so I have one more pick or two more picks left? You have one more pick. Beef jerky falling to 12 is unbelievable. Yeah. That's Brock Purdy. That's true. That's Brock That's Purdy. That's Brock Purdy. So I'm going to list one more thing that is really towel specific. Small can of Coke Zero. I knew, yeah, I was going to say. Yeah, I, that's okay. kind of one of my staples. I don't drink a lot of pop. We don't drink any. <clears throat> we yeah. really drink very little pop. But a small can of Coke Zero, that's good for me. I, I wasn't sure if you are going to pick Coke Zero because A, I wouldn't have picked it. And B, it's a drink, right? Not a... That's fine. It's your pick. Um, 14, I'm staring at two here. I'll, I'll call it out. It's the last pick of the draft. I'm staring at bananas and I'm staring at apples here. Yeah, two good picks. I had them both listed. I'm going to go with bananas. They have their own wrapper. You can throw it out the window and that's cool. Uh, I think they hold, right? Like if a banana takes a hit, it's okay. If an apple takes a hit, that's a good chunk of that apple. That's uh, just bad. That's true. So I'm going to go with bananas here because I think they're a little tough. Although it's got to be a relatively green banana because as soon as a banana comes in contact with a lunch bag, it magically turns brown at seven times the normal rate when it be if it's in your kitchen. That's a fact. It's science. Uh, it's science. I will say this though. If you get a smooshy banana or like a brown banana... If you go back to my first pick here, Nutella, if you just can stuff it in the Nutella sandwich or bagel, it cancels out the squishiness. Yeah. Also, a scientific yeah. fact. Facts. We're just, this is great science here. Okay. Really, super good uh, science. We're, we're good for We're time. done here. I've yeah. just got a, one more wild card here. You have no more picks. No, no. It's not a pick. A undrafted free agent. <laughs> undrafted free agent. So an undrafted free agent, for some reason, we ran out of food. And we stop at Hickville Gas and Food in Kentucky are you taking the cheeseburger dog or the ham and cheese ham and cheese what sandwich ham and cheese sandwich it's been there for a long time it's warm <laughs> or the cheeseburger doggy I gotta eat one of those two cheeseburger dog cheeseburger dog okay yeah. so then that leaves me with a ham and cheese sandwich both of them are terrible both of them are likely they're gonna give you the runs but super entertaining lots of turnovers at like good locker room guys lots of fun Cheeseburger dog is so funny. You think it's a good locker room guy? Oh cheeseburger yeah, guys? cheeseburger dog is so funny. Like the a, stories he's got, like a journeyman, right? A like journeyman. he's been around, like oh, a yeah. like a JaVale McGee, like he's traveled a lot. Yep, he's played he, in China. He's played in <laughs> Dwight Beirut. We have Dwight Howard just in China. It's, it's really funny just to watch those highlights. Yeah, who's and watch that him fight Middle Eastern some, dude or Turkish dude? That some was seven a foot eight guy. Uh, yeah, nothing about the draft. I'm done there. Uh, we're ahead of time, but I have nothing else to talk. We're about. done. So to be clear, okay. We're going to bring the show on the road, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, practice stuff up because our fans, like, they're going to miss us if we don't record in Florida. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, Peace out, everybody. Good oh, show. Wow. Okay. That's it. Oh, you're going to put up the drafts so that way uh, our fans can vote on who's the better team, right? <laughs> yes, lots of fans. Lots of fans this. vote on this stuff. Um, okay, I will I will be making this. I, I will post I'm it. I'm kind so of looking we... forward to the cover. <laughs> what cover? What do you mean? Well, when you, like, for the episode, you put... You're going to put a picture of Dan Campbell, then you're going to put a picture of a banana? Actually, I already made it. You're right. Dan Campbell, I think, is one of the icons. And then I think I have, like, Pringles. I think I just put a jar of Nutella because I knew that was going to go high. <laughs> and then I have, a, I think I have a little bunch of grapes. But, yes, it's it's going to be good. Very um, good. Okay. Say bye to the people. Bye, people. Thanks for the support. Come watch us on YouTube and on every other social media or listening platform. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Good I'm, job. I'm cracked. See ya. <laughs>